the natural world. In the beginning. Before sky and earth were separated, everything was formless and undifferentiated. This was called the great beginning. The great beginning gave birth to the void and the void gave birth to the universe. In the universe was vapor, and when vapor became differentiated, it separated into sky and earth. The clear light of vapor of yang rose to become the sky, and the heavy muddy vapor of yin sank to become the earth. Since the vapor of yang rose faster than the vapor of yin could sink, the sky was formed before the earth. When the primordial energies of the earth and the sky copulated, yin and yang emerged. The interaction of yin and yang generated the four seasons, and the cycles of the four seasons gave life to all things. The essence of yang was gathered to form fire, and from the essence of fire the sun was born. The essence of yin was gathered to form water, and from the essence of water the moon was born. When the procreative essences of the sun and moon were brought together, the stars emerged. The Ways of Nature The sky is round, the earth is square. Squareness is associated with darkness, and roundness is associated with brightness. Brightness expands and spreads outward, therefore it is manifested in the rays of the sun. Darkness contains and draws inward, therefore it is manifested in the light of the moon. That which expands initiates the beginning of things, and that which contains completes the transformation. When the expansive vapor of the sky is angry, there is wind. When the containing vapor of the earth is harmonious, there is rain. When the vapors of yin and yang compete, there is thunder. When they are unruly, there is fog. If yang dominates yin, the fog becomes rain or dew. If yin dominates yang, the fog becomes frost or snow. Creatures with fur and feathers are yang in nature. Therefore, it is natural for them to run and fly. Creatures with scales and shells are yin in nature. Therefore, it is natural for them to hide. The sun contains the essence of yang. Yang-oriented animals respond to the sun by shedding their fur and plumage in summer and thickening them in winter. The moon contains the essence of yin. When the moon wanes, fish diminish in size, and the bodies of mollusks shrink. Fire rises and water descends. Therefore, birds, which are yang in nature, fly in the sky, and fish, which are yin in nature, dive to the bottom of the sea. All things are connected and respond to one another. When the tiger roars, wind will whistle through the valleys. When the dragon flies, clouds will be formed in the sky. When lions fight, there will be eclipses of the sun and the moon. When whales die, shooting stars will appear. When silkworms spin their cocoons, the strings of the zither will become brittle and break. When the planet Venus falls to the horizon, the waters of the sea will become restless. The actions of humanity also affect the natural world. When there is a lot of killing, gales and tornadoes will appear. When power is misused, locusts and other harmful insects will multiply. When innocent people are killed, there will be drought. When there is injustice, there will be floods and rainstorms. Therefore, spring, summer, autumn, and winter are enforcers of celestial judgment. The sun and the moon are celestial messengers. The conjunction of stars and planets signifies a gathering of celestial power, and rainbows and shooting stars are omens. The sky and the earth. There are nine domains in the celestial realm, arranged in a grid of nine squares. The square in the center, called the central celestial domain, is the highest part of the celestial realm. There are five roving stars, planets. The metal star rules the west. Its animal is the white tiger, and it is associated with autumn and the color white. The wood star rules the east. Its animal is the green dragon, and it is associated with spring and the color green. The water star rules the north. Its animal is the black tortoise, and it is associated with winter and the color black. The fire star rules the south. Its animal is the red raven, or phoenix, and it is associated with summer and the color red. The earth star rules the center. Its animal is the yellow dragon, and it is associated with all four seasons and the color yellow. 
The earth lies within the six realms, north, south, east, west, above, and below, and the four directions which are delineated by the apparent paths of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Each year is ruled by a guardian star and regulated by the four seasons. Land extending east and west is measured by longitude, and land extending north and south is measured by latitude. Mountains are associated with benevolence and virtue. They are the root of all things. Water is associated with intelligence and judgment. It rewards and punishes. High ground is yang, therefore it is associated with activity. Low ground is yin, therefore it is associated with rest. Mounds are yang and male in nature. Hollows are yin and female in nature. The Seasons The eight winds mark eight seasonal changes. Approximately 45 days after the winter solstice, the slanting rain wind arrives. In ancient times, this is when prisoners who committed petty crimes were released. Approximately 45 days later, the cleansing and forgiving wind arrives. During this time, the fields are inspected and irrigation ditches are repaired. Approximately 45 days later, the bright and clear wind arrives. At this time, the people offer their best woven cloth to the sky in thanksgiving. Approximately 45 days later, the goodwill wind arrives. This is when common citizens who have contributed to the welfare of the state are rewarded. Approximately 45 days later, the cool breeze wind arrives. At this time, grains and fruits are offered to the earth in thanksgiving. Approximately 45 days later, the confining wind arrives. During this time, musical instruments are packed and stored. Approximately 45 days later, the non-circulating wind arrives. This is the time when houses, public buildings, and roads are repaired. Approximately 45 days later, the frontier wind arrives. At this time, the city gates are closed and the bridges are drawn. It is also the time when certain types of criminals are punished. The Five Elements Wood chokes earth, earth blocks water, water extinguishes fire, fire destroys metal, and metal cuts wood. Rice grows in spring and dies in autumn. Peppers grow in summer and die in winter. Wheat grows in autumn and dies in summer. And legumes and root vegetables grow in winter and die in summer. When wood is strong, water is weak. When fire begins to strengthen, metal suffocates and earth dies. When fire is strong, wood is weak. When earth begins to strengthen, water suffocates and metal dies. When earth is strong, fire is weak. When metal begins to strengthen, wood suffocates and water dies. When metal is strong, earth is weak. When water begins to strengthen, fire suffocates and wood dies. When water is strong, metal is weak. When wood begins to strengthen, earth suffocates and fire dies. There are five primary colors, five flavors, and five elements. Of the colors, yellow, white, black, green, and red, yellow is dominant. Of the five flavors, sweet, spicy, sour, salty, and bitter, sweet is dominant. Of the five elements, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth, earth is dominant. Strengthen wood to restrain earth, cultivate wood to strengthen fire, restrain fire to strengthen clouds, cultivate clouds to obtain rain, water, and strengthen earth to restrain water. Use earth to neutralize water, use water to overcome fire, use fire to melt metal, and use metal to restrain wood. These are the principles of the interactions of the five elements. The Natural Cycle of the Seasons and the Months The ancient sages were in tune with the seasons. They observed the changes in nature and kept in touch with the natural order of things. If humanity is not in harmony with the seasons, the balance of nature will be disrupted and disasters will occur. The first solar month is at the beginning of spring. The ceremonies in this month focus on blessing the household. When the east winds begin to blow, the ice melts. The worms stir, the fish swim to the surface of the lakes, the bears awaken from hibernation and hunt fish at the river shallows, and the ravens begin their journey north. In this month, the enlightened ruler rewards trustworthy subjects, lessens the burdens of the people, and reduces taxes. On the first day of spring, the priests purify the ceremonial grounds, offer jade to the spirits, and ask for blessings and protection. Logging is forbidden, 
as are the gathering of eggs and the hunting of female animals. In this month, there is no construction of government and public buildings, because the people need to recover from a long winter. If the appropriate ceremonies for the month are not performed, there will be disasters. If the rites of summer are performed in spring, wind and rain will be unpredictable, grass and trees will wither, and there will be fear and anxiety among the people. If the rites of autumn are performed in spring, there will be epidemics, tornadoes, and rainstorms. Weeds will also grow out of control and destroy the crops. If the rites of winter are performed in spring, floods, hailstorms, and early frost will destroy the harvest. The second month is in the middle of spring. Soft rains begin to fall and the prune and cherry trees start to flower. Worms and insects emerge from their nests and holes. The sound of the yellow birds is heard, and hawks and eagles are seen hovering over the fields. In this month, the judges inspect the prisons and lessen the sentences of offenders who have committed lesser crimes. Wardens are reminded to treat the prisoners fairly. Gifts are sent to orphans, widows, and the elderly, and attention is given to the cultivation of roots and tubers. During this month, the weighing scales of merchants are inspected to ensure that they comply with government standards. Opening the gates of irrigation ditches, burning trees, and using nets to catch fish are all prohibited. There are no military excursions or training this month, because the citizens need to get their fields plowed. If the rites of autumn are performed in the second month, there will be floods, icy winds, and violent crimes. If the rites of winter are performed, the breath of yang will not be sufficient to withstand the cold air. Consequently, the wheat crop will be destroyed, and there will be famine and social disorder. If the rites of summer are performed, there will be drought. The heat waves will arrive early, and insects will ruin the crops. The third month is at the end of spring. In this month, trees begin to bloom, and field mice can be seen scampering in the fields. Rainbows are frequent, and water lilies begin to grow in the ponds. During this month, boats are inspected, and damages are repaired. Fish is offered at the shrines, and special ceremonies are performed to ensure a good harvest at sea. The breath of life is strongest in the third month because the vapor of yang penetrates deep into the earth to make all things grow. Farmers are encouraged to devote all their efforts to cultivation. No tribute is collected, and poor families are given subsidies of seeds and farming supplies. Gifts of cloth and coins are sent to the nobles and civil servants who have contributed to the welfare of the state. Dams and irrigation ditches are inspected and repaired before the start of the rainy season. To prevent flooding, each town mobilizes its citizens to repair the dikes and dredge the water channels. The sale and transportation of hunting weapons, poison, and traps are forbidden, as is the cutting of mulberry trees. In this month, the forest is alive with birds, the leaves of the mulberry tree are fully grown, and the equipment for silk making is readied. The emperor's courtiers are instructed to abstain from meat, take ritual baths, and help with the gathering of silk. The government storage of gold, iron, leather, and dyes are inspected, and silk and clothing-making equipment is upgraded or repaired. Special days are set aside for fairs and festivities so that the people can rest and enjoy music and entertainment. At the fairs, stud animals from the imperial stables are made available for breeding so that farmers and herders can maintain a healthy stock of oxen and horses. Throughout the country, ceremonial offerings are made at the city gates to ward off evil and destructive forces. If the rituals for this month are performed correctly, there will be adequate rain in the growing season. However, if the rites of winter are performed in this month, there will be cold winds in the growing season. Crops will die, and there will be fear and anxiety among the people. If the rites of summer are performed, there will be epidemics. Rain will be inadequate, and the trees and grass will die. If the rites of autumn are performed, the sky will be cloudy, and there will be floods, war, and destruction. The fourth month is at the beginning of summer. The ceremonies of this month focus on honoring the spirit of the hearth. With the coming of summer, the sounds of crickets and toads are heard. Night crawlers emerge from the tilled earth, the peach trees bear fruit, and bitter melons ripen. On the first day of summer, ceremonies welcoming the summer are performed south of the capital. After the ceremony, government officials who have contributed to the welfare of the state are promoted. A feast is prepared, and citizens known for their virtue and filial piety are recruited into the civil service. During this month, no buildings are to be demolished, no new structures erected, and no large trees felled. Grasslands are inspected, and their natural resources are estimated. 
Farmers are told to watch for wild animals and birds that may destroy the crops. When the first grains of the wheat are harvested, there are ceremonies of thanksgiving and petty criminals are released from prison. In this month, the state apothecaries are inspected to ensure that there are sufficient herbs in case of epidemics. If the rites of autumn are performed in early summer, there will be excessive rain, and crops will not grow. People in the villages will starve, and the cities will be filled with beggars. If the rites of winter are performed, grass and trees will wither early, and cities will be destroyed by floods. If the rites of spring are performed, there will be locusts and windstorms, and the fruits will not ripen. The fifth month is in the middle of summer. At this time, yang is at its height. Praying mantises are seen in the fields, bird songs are heard in the woods, and the sounds of the toads have disappeared. The ceremonies of this month focus on honoring the spirits of the mountains, rivers, and springs. During this month, the important ceremony of rainmaking is also performed. The rituals are accompanied by music and the offering of wheat grains, chickens, apricots, and peaches. In this month, the cutting of blue grass and the burning of charcoal for cloth dyeing are forbidden, as is the drying of large quantities of cloth under the hot sun. The city gates are opened, and merchandise from the border towns is made available in the markets. The sentences of serious offenders are reduced, and food and supplies are given to widows, orphans, and the elderly. During this month, the oxen and the horses are pregnant. Livestock is rounded up, horses are trained, and the pregnant animals are put in separate stalls for safety. As summer reaches its height, the deer grow their antlers, the sounds of cicadas are heard, and the summer grasses are tall. Open fires in the countryside are prohibited. Shepherds are encouraged to take their flocks to high pastures, and citizens are allowed to move to the mountains or live in tree houses to escape the heat. If the rites of winter are performed in the fifth month, hail and frost will damage the crops. Roads will be blocked by landslides, and there will be mutiny among the troops. If the rites of spring are performed, the crops will not ripen. Harmful insects will destroy the seeds, and there will be famine. If the rites of autumn are performed, grass and trees will wither, fruits will be sour, and there will be drought and plagues. After the summer solstice, the breath of yin begins to rise. Yang and yin vie for control, and as the breath of yin continues to grow, life gives way to decay and death. During this time, people need to purify themselves by abstaining from meat and sensual activities. Government ministers and officials should use this time to observe the changes of yin and yang and plan their policies. The sixth month is at the end of summer. During this month, the cool winds begin to blow. Crickets hide in the cracks in the walls, young eagles take their first flight, and the grass is cut for fodder. The ceremonies of this month focus on honoring the guardians of the earth, and the four directions. In this month, the fishermen are mobilized to capture sea snakes and sharks so that the waters are safe for travel. Woodlands are inspected, and fodder is collected and stored. The dead are remembered in memorial services, the sick are comforted, and the elderly are given supplies of rice. The newly dead are buried with gifts and offerings so that they can make their journey back to the earth. By the end of summer, the trees are at the height of their growth. The logging of growing trees is prohibited. Only dead trees and fallen branches are allowed to be gathered for firewood. The soil is moist and rich, the weather is hot, and there is frequent rain. This is when the grass should be cut and mulched, so that the soil will be rich for the years to come. In this month, there is no large-scale public construction and no conscription. If the rites of spring are performed in late summer, the grains will wither. The people will suffer from colds and respiratory diseases, and there will be many homeless people wandering the countryside. If the rites of autumn are performed, there will be floods in the lowlands. Crops will not ripen, and there will be birth defects and infant mortality. If the rites of winter are performed, cold winds will blow. Vultures will prey on young animals, and the people will abandon their fields to take shelter in the cities. The seventh month is at the beginning of autumn. The ceremonies of the seventh month focus on honoring the guardians of doors and entrances. In this month, cool winds blow and frost begins to fall. The sounds of the winter cicadas are heard, and eagles and hawks increase their hunting activity. This is also the time when prisoners on death row are executed. During this month, citizens who are unfilial, disrespectful, and quarrelsome are brought before the magistrates and punished. 
On the first day of autumn, the ceremony of welcoming the season is performed in the fields west of the capital. After the ceremony, military officers and soldiers who have demonstrated bravery are rewarded. The commanders are instructed to train the troops and raise morale. Soldiers who have distinguished themselves in training are promoted and given the chance to lead military excursions against bandits and insubordinate tribute kingdoms. Patrols are increased along the nation's borders to ensure that the frontier towns are protected from invasion. In the towns and villages, the judges review the codes of law, inspect the prisons, and try cases of rape and domestic violence. In the beginning of autumn, things in the natural world begin to decay. The last grains are harvested, taxes are collected, dams are strengthened, government buildings are repaired, and public construction projects are initiated. In this month, no titles are invested, no ambassadors are sent, and no coins are minted. If the rites of this month are performed properly, the heat of summer will dissipate, and the cool winds will arrive. However, if the rites of winter are performed in autumn, the breath of yin will stifle the land. Insects will destroy the harvest, and there will be war. If the rites of spring are performed, there will be drought. The breath of yang will choke the land, and the five grains will not ripen. If the rites of summer are performed, there will be forest fires in winter. Heat and cold will be unpredictable, and there will be epidemics. The eighth month is at the height, middle, of autumn. At this time, flocks of migrating birds are seen heading for warmer lands. During this month, serious offenders and hardened criminals are sentenced. Prison security is increased, and justice is carried out swiftly. The elderly are given clothing and food supplies. Military installations, barracks, bridges, irrigation ditches, granaries, barns, and warehouses are repaired or built. Grain, dried vegetables, and hay are collected into warehouses in preparation for winter. Farmers are encouraged to plant wheat before winter arrives, and those who neglect their duties are fined. In mid-autumn, the breath of life continues to dissipate. The vapor of yang decreases daily. Water begins to chill. At this time of year, weights and measures are checked and calibrated. Border gates are unlocked, markets are opened, and merchants are encouraged to travel between villages. Goods from different parts of the country are circulated and sold. Citizens are encouraged to travel for leisure, and people from foreign countries are invited to visit and conduct business. In this way, the economy of the nation thrives and the treasury is filled. If the rites of spring are performed at the height of autumn, there will be no rain. Flowers and trees will not wither to prepare for winter, and there will be fear and distrust among the people. If the rites of summer are performed, there will be severe drought. The worms will not burrow into the earth, and there will be no harvest the next year. If the rites of winter are performed, there will be windstorms and untimely rain, and grass and trees will wither early. The ninth month is at the end of autumn. By this time the birds have migrated south, the chrysanthemum flowers are in bloom, and leopards and tigers are constantly hunting. During this month, frost begins to fall. Dried food, fodder, firewood, and other provisions are collected and stored for the winter. Public works are halted. Construction workers and farmers are advised to return home so that they will not be exposed to the chilly winds. The rate of taxation and tribute for the next year, based on the yield of the past year, is announced. In the last month of autumn, soldiers are drilled and assigned to battalions. Commanders, troops, and war machines are assembled in the training fields, and military exercises are conducted. By this time of year, the grass has withered, the trees are without leaves, and animals have burrowed into the ground. The cutting of trees is prohibited, firewood must be gathered from fallen branches. Criminal cases are tried and sentences are passed. Delinquent taxes and tribute are collected, and excesses are returned. Obstacles are cleared from the roads to ensure that traffic on the main thoroughfares can move smoothly. If the rites of summer are performed in late autumn, there will be disastrous flooding. The provisions stored for winter will be damaged, and there will be widespread epidemics of colds and respiratory problems. If the rites of winter are performed, bandits and thieves will thrive. Border towns will be invaded, and there will be earthquakes. If the rites of spring are performed, there will be hot winds in the cool months. The people will be lazy and weak, and there will be war and violence. The tenth month is at the beginning of winter. The ceremonies of this month focus on honoring the spirit of wells and springs. 
In this month, water begins to freeze. The ground is cold and earthworms have disappeared. The nation is readied for winter. The relocation of homes is prohibited, and those caught on the road are transported back to their respective hometowns. Criminals on death row are executed, and instigators of civil disturbance are punished. On the first day of winter, the ceremony of welcoming the winter season is performed in the fields north of the capital. After the ceremony, those who have died in the service of the nation are honored. Gifts are sent to their families and descendants, and orphans and widows are comforted. The breath of yin reaches its height on this day. During this month, all the grains are gathered into granaries. The city walls are inspected and repaired, guards are posted at the gates, and the locks on the gates are secured. The border patrols are put on alert, and roads and footpaths along the frontier are cleared of obstacles. At this time of year, the funeral rites are reviewed, and the work of engravers and casket makers is inspected. If the work is below standard, the craftspeople are punished. In this month, feasts and offerings are made to the Earth Mother, the ancestors, and the celestial lords in thanks for a prosperous year. Farmers are rewarded, military commanders are tested, and taxes are collected from those who harvest fish and kelp. However, since this is winter, the taxes are minimal. If the rites of spring are performed in early winter, water will not freeze. The vapors of the earth will rise, and people will be forced out of their homes. If the rites of summer are performed, there will be strong warm winds and swarms of insects will appear. If the rites of autumn are performed, frost and snow will be untimely. There will be disturbances and skirmishes along the border, and land will be lost to invaders. The eleventh month is in the middle of winter. At this time, the ice on the lakes thickens, the ground is covered with snow, the birds are silent, and tigers and other large animals begin to choose their mates. This is a time of rest. There is no public construction, no building of new houses, and no mobilization of workforces. The soil must not be disturbed in midwinter. Otherwise, hibernating animals will die and there will be epidemics. The police are instructed to increase their vigilance. Robbers, thieves, and rapists who are arrested are punished immediately. During this month, wine is brewed. The wine containers are cleaned, the ingredients are measured, and the brewers are told to use the best millet and rice and the purest water. Offerings are made to the oceans, the rivers, and the great lakes. Grains and animals abandoned in the open fields are free for the taking. The wardens of the forests and marshes announce that hunting and the gathering of wild edible plants are permitted. However, disputes over game and foraged foods are not tolerated, and offenders are punished and fined. In midwinter, the ruler and the ministers are encouraged to perform rites of purification and abstain from meat. They retire to a quiet and secluded place to rest. They minimize desire, do not listen to music, and refrain from sexual activity. Having rested mind and body, they will be ready for the tasks of the next year. In this month, only the tall grass is left standing. The worms are hidden underground, and the deer are shedding their antlers. Only trees in the vicinity of springs can be felled for firewood and the making of farm equipment. Idle government administrators are dismissed, and surplus equipment is stowed away. Gates and locks in government buildings are inspected, and prison facilities are repaired. If the rites of summer are performed in the eleventh month, there will be drought. Heavy fog will cover the land, and there will be constant thunder and lightning. If the rites of autumn are performed, there will be excessive rain. Melons and legumes will not ripen, and there will be war and destruction. If the rites of spring are performed, locusts will destroy the crops. The water in the springs will become stale, and there will be epidemics. The twelfth month is at the end of winter. During this month, life begins to stir. The ravens begin to leave the warmer lands, and many birds prepare to build their nests. The cries of apes, monkeys, and other creatures of the forest are heard, and ducks and hens are ready to lay eggs. In this month, the farmers are encouraged to breed plow animals and repair plows. The fishing season begins. The amount of grain and storage is recorded, and based on the deficit or surplus, the next season's farming activity is planned. Musicians schedule rehearsals and give public performances. Forests are cleared of fallen branches and dead trees to prepare for spring growth. By the end of winter, the sun has completed its yearly cycle, and the constellations have appeared in the sky in one full cycle. The year has come to an end, and a new one will begin. 
To allow the citizens to prepare for the coming of the new year, no new government projects are started. As the year draws to an end, the ruler and the ministers review the laws, the rites, and the rituals. They discuss the past year's achievements and plan the next year's projects. The income of the people is recorded, and every household is asked to contribute a fraction of its income to the offerings at the mountain and valley shrines. If the rites of autumn are performed in the twelfth month, frost will fall early, snails will multiply, and crops will be ruined. People will abandon the countryside to seek shelter in the towns, and crime and violence will increase. If the rites of spring are performed, there will be birth defects, infant deaths, and illness. If the rites of summer are performed, snow will fall at inappropriate times. The ice on the rivers and lakes will melt early, and there will be floods.